In this video, we're going to be asking, does size matter? 16 inch wheels versus eight. Who comes out on top? Okay. In the USA and Europe, e-scooters have been popularized by scooter sharing platforms like Bird, Lime and Jump. What we want to know is, is the UK ready for this? The Department for Transport is currently asking the same thing and conducting a review, asking companies like us to submit our opinion to help them build a better policy for micro mobility. We're really excited by this and think it's a great opportunity to set a new standard for scooters in the UK. After all, scooters are really good fun, easy to use and a great way for us to get towards a greener, cleaner future. However, we have some major concerns when it comes to scooters with small wheels. Often they are hard or solid, they're of poor design or quality and have underperforming braking ability. And we're not the only ones who agree. In a recent report by the International Transport Forum, they made a long list of recommendations to make small wheel scooters safe. This report also shed some light into the fatalities and injuries experienced by other countries with small wheel scooters. Many injuries are purported to be caused by riders colliding with obstacles in the road like a pothole, flagstone or debris. The handling of a scooter due to poor design or engineering has also been the reason for the riders coming off and having an accident. It's also really important to point out that many councils in the UK are not obliged to fix or check potholes that are shallower than 50 millimeters in depth. So we decided to test a 16 inch wheel and an eight inch wheel on a specifically designed test rig to simulate a pothole at varying sizes and depths. We decided to measure a couple of obstacles in and around the center of Manchester, some curb stones, some, some potholes, and see just how uh, deep they were. They were of varying depths. Um, some big ones like this one here, some surprising ones. Uh, most curbs are about 100-ish millimeters, sometimes a little bit, a bit deeper. Some flagstones that you can see here on the pavement and on a path. So when it comes to our <laughs> test that we, uh, we ran and the rig that we built, we wanted to replicate some of the obstacles that we found out on the street from that footage that you just saw. So we used 18 millimeter birch plywood panels just because they're ready, readily available and we laid them up in layers to make them higher or lower. So the first uh, test that we did was 36 millimeters in depth and we had a, a gap that you can see here of 400 millimeters. On the top is the eight inch wheeled scooter and on the bottom is the 16 inch scooter, uh, the Swifty. We put some uh, yellow and black markings on there just to try and gauge a speed. So afterwards we could calculate approximately how fast the two scooters were going. Um, it's not an exact science, but about 10 kilometers an hour, they were both going roughly there or thereabouts uh, to simulate a, a real world environment. So we're gonna show a number of clips for each test. There's three tests in total and there are two uh, different widths for each test uh, to try and figure out if there's any differences. And what I'm gonna do is break down all of those tests and show you multiple views each time uh, at full speed and at half speed so we can rewind the video and see what is actually happening in the detail. So let's play these clips now and just give you an idea. There's a Swifty at full speed and the Xiaomi at full speed. Half speed, half speed again. So let's go to half speed and I'm gonna slow the video down now and I'm gonna go through frame by frame just to show you what's happening. So the 16 inch wheel scooter, as you can see here, is coming off the platform, it just hits the floor, strikes the obstacle, which is at 36 millimeters. The tire does a really good job, as you can see, of, of decompressing, they're absorbing some of the energy and then the scooter wheel comes off the ground because the energy has thrown that back up. You can see the riding position of the rider. In this case, that's me. Um, I thought it was very important as the, the co-founder of Swifty Scooters to, to do the riding as opposed to a, someone else who maybe has not got as much experience. Um, I've ridden scooters for 10 years, so I guess I'm, I'm, I'm experienced at the the jarring effect of riding over an obstacle. Um, but as you'll see later in the test, it is quite worrying, uh, especially for the scooter sharing um, scooters that are out there, for people that have never been on a scooter before, 
um, if they're exposed to some of these obstacles, uh, there's, a, in my opinion, a, a high chance of them having an accident or coming off because they just will not be expecting the kind of handling uh, that is the result of striking the, uh, the, the, the object. So the riding position of myself there is quite good. Center of gravity is towards the back of the wheel, as you can see. And by all means, this is quite a minimal, uh, a minimal effect. The, the scooter absorbs the energy really, really well. The next clip I want you to, to look at is the, the smaller wheel scooter. And what's important is to listen to the sound as well. So let's just scrub through. So the wheel comes off, strikes the board. And you can see that this is a pneumatic tire as well. And by all means, it's not so bad, the design. However, the, the front wheel is the hub motor and there's no crumple zone there at all. If I just go back to the Swifty, we have in this scooter design, a hub spoke and rim design. And the hub and the spoke and the rim is, is a crumple zone. So in the event of a, of a major impact, the rim and the spoke is designed to actually fail before the rest of the scooter and absorb uh, the, the impact. On a small wheeled scooter that's got a, a, a hub motor at the front, this is a solid piece of aluminium and uh, the only absorption that's gonna be happening is through the tire itself. And you can kind of just make out there that the tire is very decompressed. It's almost completely decompressed um, and in the, the more extreme tests that we do later on, there's, there's, a, there's a, a louder bang and that's because the aluminium part of the hub is actually hitting uh, the edge of the obstacle. I also want you to note here, the stem here that you can see, it really deflects forwards and backwards quite a lot. You can see if I scrub this forwards and backwards, it kind of goes forwards, back, forwards. So forwards on impact, back and then forwards again. That's a lot of stress and strain going through this folding stem. Uh, the folding mechanism here, which is like a hook design, has also, um, I've seen they have failed many times in this area and that's because of this type of an impact, bang. It's not good. Also, when the wheel strikes the edge, you can see the rear wheel comes off the back of the board here and then bounces back down. And the feet, most importantly to note, which is the, the big one, come completely off the foot plate. So at 36 millimeters, which is um, quite a common obstacle size that we found when we went out and measured some curbs and, and lips on, um, on paving stones and tree roots, this is, this is a frequent occurrence that you'll be exposed to this type of obstacle. And for your feet to come off the deck at a very relative low speed, is, um, it's not good at all. And you can hear the skidding. So the skidding, what you're hearing there, I scrub back and forth is you're hearing the wheel I think it's the rear wheel making contact with the board and um, it's skidding forwards and that's because there's been a slight change in direction because the hand the handling the handlebars are so twitchy they're so narrow it's very hard to keep the wheel straight especially when you have an impact like this because it's all of a sudden you're not expecting to be thrown up you can see the posture of my hips they get thrown up into the air and I'm kind of going forwards a little bit. My feet land actually further back, you can see there, further back on the platform. So by all means, I'm losing control when I'm riding this, hitting this obstacle. Okay, next test. So it's the, the same again, but the pothole now is, is, is wider at 800 millimeters. There's the Swifty, there's the Xiaomi slow down side by side if I just stop that there and just play that back again you can see the Swifty the bigger the bigger wheel scooter it's, it's not a big occurrence for it you can see the knees and the posture of the body it's pretty relaxed it's, it's just absorbing the impact and importantly if you look at the stem again look at this this folding stem here so look at the two and look at, look at the, the amount of deflection that you get here. It really bends forwards and backwards. Whereas this one, it's nice and straight. I mean, that's half speed, 800, 800 millimeter gap. And 
by all means it's, it's not a serious impact. Look how much my feet come off. So the front wheel comes off the board, strikes the edge of the impact, the rear wheel is coming off the ground completely, it's throwing me up into the air, the handlebar is deflecting forwards, the entire scooter is going through quite a lot of stress and strain at this moment. The rear wheel lands on the floor and then bounces up again and then you can see my feet have come completely off the ground again. Not as high as the first one which is interesting but my feet land further back and you can hear that skidding again which isn't good. Okay test number two. So this time we put another board in the test rig that you can see here and we made the height of the pothole 54 millimeters. So we put the distance back to 400 millimeters. It's also worth uh, mentioning here that we did actually connect this, bar, this board, which is the striking area to the ground so it didn't move. Uh, we originally did the first test and uh, this started to move, which gave an in, inaccurate um, um, impact for the front wheel. So we connected it, we bolted it to the floor. <coughs> Full speed. I'm slowing that down now to show you side by side. Let's see them top and bottom and let's see what's happened. So both scooters enter the pothole, they strike. Tires are both doing a good job. You can see the Swifty's doing a good job there. Bounces out. Look at the rear wheel of the small scooter here bouncing up already because of the energy transfer. Look at the handlebar as well, how far it's going forwards, it's completely out of alignment. The, the bigger wheel scooter is okay. Rear wheel is still on the back. It's not coming off the ground at any point in time. The only difference is the front wheel pops up, absorbs the energy, feet stay on the deck all that time. Look at the difference in the body posture with the two scooters. It's by all means, it's off the ground, almost completely there. You can see the front wheel is kind of, well, maybe the front wheel is still connected. No, it's off the ground. So the whole thing is off the ground there and out of control. And that's where you hear the sound. And look at the deflection in the stem. That is a major deflection. It's even more extreme than before, which you would imagine because the impact is gonna be greater. And I think you can actually you can actually see some of the frame deflect a little bit as well, maybe. It's hard to tell. We really need a very high speed camera to detect properly. But yeah, let's uh, look at them in full screen so we can see. So this, the Swifty is, is very much, look at the body posture. The body posture doesn't really change. The shoulders absorb, the, the, the knees absorb some of the impact. And the scooter is, is doing fine. Now the small wheel scooter, look at look at how my heels come off the ground there. Look at that deflection in the handlebar, wow, that's incredible. That's very dangerous. It goes forwards and backwards. You can see the body posture is much more upright than when in the scooting position. The knees are, um, they're, they're bent here, the elbows are braced. Boom, up you go. By all means, feet come off the ground that you can see there. Oh, look at that. The feet are completely off the ground and the scooter is off the ground. That's a very dangerous scenario where you've got no point of contact in the ground. So you're, you're definitely going to be losing control. And importantly here, the heels land right at the back of the scooter, which is not good. So we increased the gap to 800 millimeters. Let's see what happened. Full speed. Wow, look at that. Yep, full speed. Okay. Let's slow that back down and have a look. So both scooters enter. They strike as expected like before. And now what's happening? So let's look at the scooter at the bottom first. So rear wheel enters the floor. That's interesting. At no point are the wheels off the ground of the larger wheel scooter at any point at the same time. 
Well, maybe you could argue there. Maybe. Maybe not. It's very close. It's a very fraction of a second. Heels come off the, off the foot plate in this time, so the energy is more. But they, the, the front of the toes and the ball of the foot is in contact. The posture of the rider is still a good posture. Center of gravity is a bit more further forwards than the previous test, but that's to be expected because the energy involved is, is more because the obstacle is higher. Uh, let's focus now on the 8-inch scooter and see what's happened. Wow, look at the, how high the heels have come off the ground. So if this deck is 54 millimeters in total height, that you could argue that this is maybe maybe 100 millimeters off. That's completely off. Wow. And the rear wheel upon impact of the edge of the gap bounces back up and hits the heels which 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 gives you further uh, further loss of control being struck like that in the heels and look at the position here so let's look at that at full screen and see what's going on yeah it's i mean it's a very you can see it's a very uh it's not a it's not a very um See the deflection of the stem this time. Whoa, really far forwards. I come right off the ground. Yeah, I mean, it's really kangarooing there. Boom. And look at the deflection now. So the stem really does worry me. This does worry me because if this fails and snaps, you know, the, all this energy that's going through, you only need a few of these impacts to this could really f make this whole part fail so look at the stem going forwards then it goes backwards forwards and then backwards and that's because i'm trying to hang on and stay uh stay upright while i'm i'm, I'm riding this and if you listen to the sound as well that's that's it skidding okay so this is the big test now this is 72 millimeters deep uh, we did find obstacles out on the street that were 72 or greater uh, in depth uh, at 400 millimeters wide. So let's run the footage. Okay, wow. Disaster. Let's reverse that and just have a look. See what's happening. So the interesting thing about the 16 inch wheel scooter here is that it doesn't actually touch the bottom of the pothole. It clears the pothole way before. You see, it's almost like magic. And that's because the, the, the center of gravity in this scooter is, is way further back. So by the time you're traveling and the wheel is bigger, you, you've cleared the gap and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna escape no problem. So it's, it's almost like the depth has no effect on this test for the big scooter until you get to the rear wheel because then it drops down in, but it's absolutely fine, it clears. However, on the right hand side, as you can see, this is a, an absolute disaster. I mean, there's not much more we need to say really about that one. Let's uh, side by side, Let's stop here. Bottom scooter clears, so the top scooter, what's happening? So the wheel drops in, hits the floor, unlike the 16-inch scooter, and hits the corner. So that's a really big, oh, look at the folding stem. It's really far forward. So all that pressure is going through the folding stem. Again, putting a lot of stress and strain on the frame here. Energy is going to be pushed all the way through and throws you right over the handlebars. You can see the tire is completely depressed. And uh, this this struck the, the board and made a big bang, I remember. Um, the wheel rebounds off, slides backwards underneath you, and I'm thrown directly over the handlebars. So I just want to point out that I did use some crash pads. Uh, I had to reposition them because I actually landed off the crash pad. Um, I didn't realize I would travel so far. I go off screen as you can see. I was okay. Um, I, I kind of hurt my wrist a little bit, but it's okay. So 800 millimeters wide. What 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 would happen here? Let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit different. A little bit different. Let's keep watching and see what happens. Let's pause it 
here and just have a look. So the Swifty again doesn't doesn't clear the gap, but enters the gap. You can see the tire depress as well there a little bit, so it absorbs some of the energy if it's striking the floor and hits the edge of the obstacle of the pothole, throws up. At every point in time, the riding position of this rider is nice, it's good. It's absorbing the energy, the knees are bent, elbows are braced. So that says to me that there's no energy being transferred up into the actual rider. Uh, so there's no real loss of control there. However, above, as you can see already, the heels are completely off because there's a force that's going up. This platform is basically pushing this way and the handlebars are obviously pushing that way as well. The, 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 the impact is so sudden and violent. You can see there that there's, there's nowhere for that energy to go other than to throw the rider forwards. And in this case, I actually went over to the side, which was a different kind of uh, different kind of failure this time. Again, gentle, not much of a big impact. But you can see what happened was, maybe it was because I was expecting this to happen. I don't know, because I'd just done the other test, so maybe it's a bit unfair. But I think also it could be that, because the handlebars of this scooter is so narrow, uh, it's harder to control the direction of the wheel and maybe I was pushing on one side more than the other uh, which caused the wheel to twist as you can see here it twists and maybe that's why it threw me off to the side because I was just so uh, so strangely balanced but this is quite a high distance here this is quite a quite a big um, a big failure um, it's a, it's a good meter and something above the ground here for sure and this obviously being thrown to one side is is awful because you would be thrown into either something that's coming up beside you if you're on the road oncoming traffic an obstacle another rider uh pedestrian someone crossing so by all means uh, a complete failure so that's that's all the test footage i think there yes um, I'd like to kind of finish by just saying that, you know, this isn't supposed to be an advertisement for our product. It's not supposed to be a marketing stunt. We obviously uh, are concerned about people riding inadequate scooters on the roads in the UK um, and we want people to be safe. So the reason why we're making this video uh, is to raise awareness and hopefully help people to stay safe while they're out there. The evidence is clear. As a scooter manufacturer, we believe it should be mandatory for all adult scooters that are going to be ridden on the road or the cycle lane to perform a pothole test. The rider must be able to maintain control at all times. This video proves that some scooters have design features that will cause them to fail the test. Those design features that we believe are most critical are wheel size and geometry. I hope this video has informed you about safe scooter design and we look forward to a green, clean future for micro mobility in all things scooters. Thanks for watching, see you next time.